So you're running Waterdeep Dragon Heist and your players need eh, just over a thousand gold pieces to renovate and reopen Troll Skull Manor. Let's talk about some creative ways they can raise the money to get their new inn into ship shape. Now just like in the real world, there's lots of ways to raise funds in the game. The easiest way is to find an investor. Assuming the characters are in Renair Never Ember's good graces, and they ought to be after saving him, he's a great source of startup capital. He'll put up the entirety of the startup costs, but he's going to want a piece of the action. Right off the bat, he asks for a 50% stake in the profits of the inn. Your players can talk that down to 40% with a DC 15 persuasion check, and down to 30% with a DC 20 persuasion check. Another way is to get a loan from Mert the Money Lender. He offers up 500 gold and asks for payments of 50 gold plus 10 gold in interest every 10 day. Those who fail to pay find out why he's also known as Mert the Merciless. Despite being a good aligned member of the Harpers, Mert sticks a band of thugs on the characters to shake them down and take whatever money and items they happen to be carrying in order to pay their debt. More interesting than these options, though, is simply doing adventurous things. Chapter 2 lays out faction missions that the players can go on, but those aren't likely to fill the coffers. Also, if you're using our faction mission overhauls, well, the faction missions work a little bit differently anyways. So this leaves you, Game Master, to figure out what to do with your players during Chapter 2. Given that this book is called Dragon Heist, I say we throw a heist into the mix. To do this quickly and easily, let's turn our attention to another Wizards of the Coast book, Keys from the Golden Vault. Yes, I'm suggesting you buy a different adventure module to help you run this adventure module. Because despite having the words heist in its name, there's a startling lack of heists in Waterdeep Dragon Heist. And on the other hand, there's nothing but heists in Keys from the Golden Vault. So let's make like a thief and steal from that book to help your players raise some capital. But first, speaking of books, did you know that I just published one of my own? That's right, Libris Nocturnum is available in digital format right now over on our website and drivethroughrpg.com, and a physical copy is available for pre-order over on Backerkit. Much like Keys to the Golden Vault and Candlekeep Mysteries, it's an adventure anthology of 13 different adventures that go from level 0 to level 12 that you can pick and choose and drop right into your own game world. It also contains a bestiary of over 60 original creatures that you can use to hunt, haunt, and terrorize your players. So check it out and pick up your copy today! That being said, there are two adventures in Keys from the Golden Vault that'll work great for our purposes. If your bad guys are the Castellanters, the Stygian Gambit works really well with some slight modifications. Verity can approach the characters for help once they've made a name for themselves, or she can be introduced to them through some third party. Also, instead of Quentin Togglepocket selling his soul to Mammon, he goes into business with the Castellanters and sells his soul to Asmodeus. The Castellanters are his silent business partner, and a contract with them can be uncovered in Area A14, Quentin's office. They don't have any direct involvement with the casino, and your players aren't going to encounter them here, but this serves as a great introduction to the Castellanter family and their infernal affairs. The other adventure I love is Masterpiece Imbroglio. The Agile Hands work great as an upstart thieves guild that act as a thorn in the side of the Zentrum. Your players can get this heist assigned to them either through a shopkeeper or a noble who owned Constantori's portrait, or from the Zentrum who want to cripple or just get rid of the Agile Hands altogether. Now since this heist is written for level 5 adventures, you're definitely going to want to tone some things down. I recommend changing Dusk's stat block from an assassin to a bandit captain, as well as changing Gwish from an Oni to an acolyte. You may also want to remove a couple of the bandits on the inside of the house just to avoid your level 2 PCs getting mobbed. I put the Agile Hands Guild House in a little hamlet just outside the river gate of Waterdeep, which that remote location I think serves it really well, because if it's in the city, I think that's a little too close to the Zentrum operations for comfort. Now, if neither of those heists sound good to you, there's always bounty hunting. The City Guard has their hands full with a gang warfare that's going on between the Zentrum and Xanathar, so they could use all the extra help that they could get. There are plenty of small fry criminals around the city that just they don't warrant the attention of the Grey Hands, and the City Watch just can't get around to them at the moment, so they've taken to posting bounties. For anywhere between 50 and 100 gold, 
players can hunt down thieves, con artists, bail jumpers, and other ne'er-do-wells. Now, just so you know, patrons of Lunch Break Heroes can get a collection of Waterdeep bounty missions to download and keep forever over on our Patreon for just as little as a dollar. Along with those bounties, you can get access to all of our adventures and written versions of our module guides. There's a ton of goodies over there, so hop on over and check it out using the link down below. On the off chance that bounty hunting doesn't tickle your fancy, there's always good old treasure hunting. For this, I'd recommend an Adventurer's League module that was released alongside Storm King's Thunder way back when, called Treasures of the Broken Horde. In this adventure, the characters discover the body of a dead treasure hunter, as well as her notes, which point to five possible locations of a hidden treasure that belonged to the Cult of the Dragon. In total, this adventure contains a thousand gold worth of loot and should only take about five to ten hours to run. It's available on DMs Guild for less than five bucks, so if you're looking for a quick way to raise that thousand gold, this is a great way to do it. Now last up on my list of suggestions is monster hunting. Up in the North Ward, there's a little shop run by Mertha Dunvalgeld, also known as Lady Monster. She collects, uses, and sells various monster parts and pieces, and she's always on the lookout for more. If you want to send your players off on a quick hunting excursion outside of Waterdeep, she's a great way to do it. Just pull up D&D Beyond's monster list and filter it down to CR two or three monsters that live in grasslands, forests, mountains, or coastal regions. That gives you about nine pages of creatures. Ignoring any humanoids, do a little eeny, meeny, miny, mo to choose a monster, then decide on a body part that she wants, point to a spot on the map of Faerun and say, fetch. For each monster part your players bring her, Lady Monster will pay 100 gold pieces. Once you put some of these ideas together, you've got one heck of a chapter two that's gonna take your players all over the city of Waterdeep and its surrounding areas. They'll be introduced to the ins and outs of the city and who's who, which is gonna set them up for the whirlwind adventure that kicks off in chapter three. And speaking of chapter three, go ahead and click that subscribe button down there so that you don't miss our videos when we dive in depth to chapter three and the fireball event and everything that comes after.